more than 8 million tons of chocolate are consumed worldwide every year. Whether in the form of bars, bonbons, or even liquid, chocolate is one of the most desired products on the planet. But have you ever wondered how it's actually produced? What makes it so addictive and irresistible to millions of people? Well, today we're traveling to Switzerland, home to one of the largest chocolate factories in the world where over 5,000 kilos of this delicious delicacy are produced every hour. So, get ready, because you're about to discover how the most consumed sweet on the planet is mass-produced. Let's begin! Step 1. Cacao Harvesting It all begins on large tropical cacao plantations, the essential ingredient of chocolate. A single one of these plantations can have over 500,000 cacao plants, and each harvest can yield over 1,000 tons of cacao beans. When the pods reach their perfect point of ripeness, harvesting begins. Farmers walk through the fields, hand-harvesting each pod with special machetes and carefully accumulating them in large baskets. Each pod contains about 50 cacao beans, just enough to produce one or two chocolate bars. Once harvested, they are transported to the opening area, where workers, with the help of large machetes, open them one by one with precise cuts. From inside, they manually extract the cacao beans, still covered by a white, thick, and sticky pulp. In this state, the beans have an acidic, strong, and quite unpleasant smell. They don't resemble the chocolate we all know at all. To transform them into something edible, they must first ferment. For several days, the beans are placed in large wooden boxes and covered with banana leaves. There, through natural processes, they begin to develop their aromatic compounds. The bitterness decreases and the flavor intensifies. Once fermentation is complete, it's time for sun drying. The beans are spread out over large open surfaces, where they remain for approximately one week. During this time, workers constantly stir them with shovels or rakes to ensure uniform drying and prevent mold formation. Only when they are completely dry, thousands of kilos of beans are loaded onto trucks and travel to the factory, where the true transformation of cacao into chocolate will begin. Step 2. Cleaning and Roasting the Beans Once the cacao beans arrive at the factory, the true industrial process begins. The sacks are unloaded, and each batch first undergoes rigorous quality control. On conveyor belts, specialized technicians analyze each bean, evaluating its moisture, size, color, and aroma, ensuring that it meets all standards. When the batch is approved, the cleaning stage begins. The beans pass through enormous vibrating machines that, with air jets and precise movements, eliminate any impurities, traces of dirt, dry leaves, or small stones that may have come from the plantation. Once clean, the thousands of cacao beans are poured into enormous industrial roasters. There, they slowly rotate while exposed to temperatures that can reach 150 degrees Celsius. During roasting, the aromas begin to intensify, and the beans acquire that dark brown color and deep smell that already resembles chocolate. The time and temperature are precisely adjusted, depending on the type of cacao and the desired flavor profile – milder, more bitter, or with fruity notes. When they reach the exact point, they pass through a rapid cooling system that stops the cooking instantly and leaves them ready for the next stage – winnowing and grinding. Step 3. Winnowing and Grinding With the beans perfectly roasted and cooled, it's time to separate what's useful from what's no longer needed. The beans enter an enormous winnowing machine, which uses rollers and air currents to break the outer shell and release the inside, known as cacao nibs. These small, dark, and shiny pieces are the soul of chocolate. They are loaded with flavor, aroma, and a fundamental natural oil – cocoa butter. But although their content is valuable, the nibs are still hard and granular, so they must be transformed into a fine, homogeneous paste. To achieve this, they are introduced into high-pressure industrial grinders, where enormous steel rollers crush them forcefully. The constant friction generates heat, and after several minutes, a dense, hot, and thick paste known as chocolate liquor is obtained. And no, it doesn't contain alcohol. It's called that because of its liquid, dark, and shiny appearance. With the chocolate liquor ready, it's time to prepare it to decide what type of chocolate will be produced. Step 4. Pressing and Separation With the cacao liquor still warm, it's time to divide it into two main components – cocoa butter and solid cacao mass. To achieve this, the thick paste is introduced into industrial hydraulic presses that exert colossal pressure, 
exceeding 500 tons. To give you an idea, it's like squeezing a giant fruit. But instead of juice, what flows out is a golden, shiny, and aromatic fat, cocoa butter. This valuable liquid is collected in large steel tanks and carefully filtered, as it's one of the most important ingredients in chocolate. It gives chocolate its smoothness, creaminess, and that perfect melt-in-your-mouth quality. On the other hand, what remains inside the press is a compact, dark, and dry mass known as cocoa cake. And this block is allowed to cool, then crushed, and ground into a fine aromatic powder. The cocoa powder we find in desserts, drinks, or instant products. With the cocoa butter and cocoa cake ready, it's time to define their destiny. Will they become dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate? Let's see. Step 5. Chocolate mixing and formulation. With the key ingredients already separated, one of the most crucial steps arrives, creating the exact formula for the chocolate to be produced. In enormous industrial mixers, operators add the precise proportions of each component, according to the type of chocolate, dark, milk, or white. Everything is measured to the gram, because a small change can completely alter the final flavor and texture. For dark chocolate, the mixture contains a high concentration of cacao mass and less sugar, resulting in a more intense and bitter flavor. In contrast, milk chocolate incorporates milk powder and a higher amount of cocoa butter, achieving a smoother, sweeter, and creamier texture. And when it comes to white chocolate, the recipe doesn't even include cacao mass. It's made exclusively with cocoa butter, sugar, and milk powder, which gives it that light color and a delicate, buttery flavor. At this stage, other essential ingredients are also added. Refined sugar, natural vanilla, soy lecithin, which acts as an emulsifier, and even, in some cases, special toppings like pieces of nuts, puffed rice, cookies, or caramel. Each formula is tested and adjusted with millimeter precision, seeking to achieve the perfect flavor, texture, and aroma. The result is a thick, dense, and shiny paste that already smells like chocolate and makes your mouth water just by looking at it. But there's still one key step missing to turn this mixture into a perfect bar. Step 6. Conching and Refining The chocolate paste is introduced into enormous machines called conches, where it is constantly kneaded and mixed for hours or even days, depending on the desired quality. During this time, the chocolate is gently heated and kept in continuous motion. This process has three key objectives to eliminate remaining moisture, to soften the texture, and to fully develop the aroma and flavor of the cacao. In other words, this is where raw chocolate transforms into something delicious. As it rotates inside the conchies, the chocolate gradually loses its bitter and intense flavor, gaining smoothness, sweetness, and that unmistakable aroma that makes it an irresistible delicacy. Once the exact point is reached, the mixture is ready for its final step, shaping it and preparing it for the world. Step 7. Molding, Packaging, and Distribution With the chocolate perfectly refined and ready, it's time to transform it into the final product we all know. The liquid, dense, and shiny mixture is carefully poured into stainless steel molds, which can be shaped into bars, bonbons, smaller snack bars, or special figures, depending on the type of chocolate being produced. At this moment, the chocolate flows with a silky texture, filling each mold with millimeter precision. Once molded, it enters cooling tunnels, where the temperature drops in a controlled manner to ensure the chocolate solidifies correctly without losing its shine, texture, or aroma. This step is crucial for achieving that characteristic sound when breaking a bar, the famous snap we enjoy so much. When the chocolate is solid, the automatic packaging process begins. Each piece is wrapped in the appropriate material, from metallic foil to sealed plastic or printed boxes, depending on the format and commercial destination. The entire process is monitored by sensors and cameras that detect any defects before sealing the product. So, the next time you buy a simple chocolate bar, remember this. Behind it lies a long, precise, and utterly fascinating process that begins in the tropical jungle and ends in that shiny wrapper you eagerly open. To finish, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? What's your favorite chocolate? Leave us your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next factory tour.